thing. At the end of your book, you talk about the content multiplier. And I think this is one of the the coolest ideas of the book. And it, <laughs> it's a game changer in my mind. So talk us through, walk us through, you know, what is the content multiplier? Okay, so a content multiplier is sort of like a hack to turn one successful piece of content into many pieces of content. So oftentimes what happens for us, we create, you know, say you write a blog post, here's uh, 15 books every marketer should read. You create it, it goes well, it gets shared, it gets likes, it gets comments, it's going awesome. And then you're like, cool, on to the next thing and you go do something else. Well, with a content multiplier, what you do is you look at a piece of content that's working well and you ask, how can I multiply this in other ways? And so in the book, we share different multipliers that, uh, that you can use to be able to take that one piece and adapt it in different ways to work for different people, different audiences, different segments. So as an example, one of the multipliers is demographic. So if we did 15 books every marketer should read, well, now we do 15 books every programmer should read, 15 books right. every, um, every mom should read, 15 books every new graduate should read, right? If you have this yeah. idea that a specific piece of content is working well, you know, you wanna go ahead and repeat that. now. The examples I just gave there are probably pr too spread out. Your audience probably doesn't include marketers, you know, moms, new graduates, you know, all these different categories. So you'd want to stick to the ones that are relevant for your audience. But if like for me, my audience is marketers. So I might do social media marketers. I might do search engine optimization marketers. I might do B2B marketers, B2C marketers. So I would choose these subsets of my audience and create that same piece of content that appeals to each of them. Yeah. So like back to your mom's content, like, yeah, it's like books for moms, book for working moms, books for single, single moms, moms. Yep. book for moms in the South. And it's just taking, it's expanding that idea a little bit, sticking yeah. sort of the same topic of top books to read, but to def different demographics. And another and way you say you can break it all by time. So yep. like best books of the 1990s, best books of the 2000s. Best books of February, of March, of April, right? Best, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And and that that and best books, I think, is one of the, the best examples to show just the absolute like exponential power of these multipliers, because the other thing you can do is start combining them, right? So you think about we did best books for moms. Okay, what are the best books for moms that came out in February, that came out in March, right. that came out? So now we've we've sort of like we've created this whole three-dimensional matrix of of tons of ideas all from that one single idea. Yeah. And I, I just thought that idea was really, was really needed. It, it like opened my eyes. I was like, wow. And it's like you said in the book, like this is not an earth shattering idea that we have times, but thinking about it in the sense of you can create content based on that. Yeah. It, it kind of just opened my eyes to that. All right. 